Here it is, a little later than anticipated. Oh yeah, I've been waiting on that for a while. First burnout, now Ike Meyer, not a full-timer on the tour. He's a guy that's driven these cars a few times, rolls down here from Canada. But this is Todd Payton's machine. They got pretty good parts and pieces on this thing, and this is a car that came out and tested when they could earlier this week. A lot of the cars went out to Phoenix and kicked off with our spring training before going to Pomona. But for the East Coast cars that didn't, NHRA offered them an opportunity to come out here and run Monday, Tuesday this week just to get a couple of laps in, kind of get everybody back in the groove. So now, let's see what they learned. With Peyton turning the screws and Ike Meyer behind the wheel, there are a lot of top fuel cars here. Qualifying for this thing is gonna take a feat. You can't just go up there and knock the tire off. You need to get a clean run down the racetrack. Doesn't necessarily have to be a track record, but you gotta get a clean run down the racetrack. Ike Meyer gonna kick us off. Let's see if we can start with a full pull. And Meyer, knowing there are a lot of cars, also knowing He's not sure how many qualifying sessions we're gonna get, wanted to at least get it to the stripe, 5.901 at 202 miles an hour. They're taking a look at things down on the racetrack. I have got a Hall of Famer up here in the tower with me. Daryl Gwynn has joined us, which is a Gainesville tradition. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Alan. It's nice to be here. I would have never thought we would have been here on a bright Saturday afternoon before uh, the Gator Nationals on Sunday, but here we are, and uh, extreme weather brings extreme conditions for these cars, and can't wait to see it. You and I chit-chatted a little bit at the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America uh, ceremonies down in Daytona earlier in the week. And coming into a situation like this really puts the pressure on the crew chiefs to make sure they get in the field, especially in top fuel, which I know has always had your heart. Yeah, and you know, we talked about it, and uh, I think you won that argument because I didn't think we'd be sitting here, number one. But number two, the crew chiefs do, do have their job cut out for them today because, uh, you know, you get one shot. There's way too many cars for a 16-car field, so you, you got to be in the top 16 to race on Sunday. So everybody gets one shot, so you got to give it your best. Well, we're still hoping to get him down the track twice, but you just never know in a situation like this as Artie Allen fires up his car here on the left side of the racetrack, and Lex June over on the right for Hot Wheels Premium Car Care Products. Lex's motto on the back of the wing, never quit. That uh, did not sound great. Cars still running. These cars don't do the big, long, smoky burnouts like they did back in the day, but uh, for Artie Allen, that definitely did not sound right. I gotta believe that wasn't what he was looking for, though. That was the shortest burnout I've ever seen. <laughs> I hope everything on, on the car is okay. We won't be able to find out until he actually pulls up and hits the gas. One thing about these nitro machines, it's not like you can just, you know, put a neutral, rev it up a couple of times and make sure it's okay. So the only thing they can do now is stage the thing up, hit the gas, and see what happens. For Lex June, his wife Gerda, sold everything over on the other side of the world, lived in Europe, moved over here to chase the dream. They both literally work almost nine to five jobs, and every nickel and every minute they have goes into bringing this car out so they can put their best foot forward whenever they get an opportunity to race it. It is the debut on the season for both. Artie Allen was here last week driving his ejected nitro car at the regional race, but this is the first time he gets a chance to get out here and hit the gas with the top fuel machine. Twenty twenty two Gator Nationals first pair. feet was Lex June, 406, 295 miles an hour for Artie Allen. I was afraid that's what was going to happen. When he did the burnout, it sounded like the throttle came disconnected, whether it broke a cable, whether something on the pedal, or whether it triggered the safety system to disconnect the throttle. But the burnout that short made me afraid that the throttle was going to disconnect. exactly right, Alan. There's some new technology out there that prevents the cars from 
doing their thing under uh, emergency conditions, and I think you're right. I think it, uh, it kicked in, and uh, they didn't get to make a run, so that's unfortunate for that team. Lex June of 406, going to put him in the number one spot for now. Looks like we're going to have to help Artie around the corner. For those of you that aren't familiar with these cars, what Daryl is referring to, these cars all have a safety circuit on them. It's called a Leahy device that should something happen, maybe it boosts and uh, you get pan pressure, maybe the blower comes off, maybe something signals the computer on car that something's not right, it will disconnect the throttle. And the theory is, if there's a small problem, it'll shut the engine off before, before it becomes a big problem. Once the throttle's disconnected, there's really nothing you can do about it until you shut the car down, go back and reset the whole system. So about their only choice was to stage it, cross their fingers. Yeah, if you don't have no throttle, you got a real big problem. So uh, they uh, had a malfunction somewhere, but uh, they'll get it figured out. And again, it has more advantages than disadvantages. So that just happened to be a some kind of malfunction but certainly it's it's definitely a safety feature no question about it we'll catch up a little more with the hall of famer daryl gwynn right after this well whoop here it is how do you like krista baldwin's new look the greek ed over there on the left side mcleod clutches lucas oil FTI and over on the right side is Spencer Massey driving the Pat Dakin car. In case of a couple of really hungry drivers that don't get to do this nearly as much as they'd like to, we want to both come out here and make sure that they make a good weekend of it out here at the Gator National. Keeps Carol Gwynn busy these days. Well, there's a lot of things to keep me busy, but the Darrow Gwynn Quality of Life chapter, we're going to have our track walk here tomorrow morning at 9.30. Um, doing a lot of things to uh, to create more opportunities for us at the Miami Project and improve the quality of lives of others that have been inflicted with uh, injuries like myself. So been bu do busy doing a lot of that. And, uh, I'm ready for the NHRA racing season to start, so here we are. Boy, you and me both. For those of you that don't know, Daryl Gwynn, native of Miami, Florida, second generation drag racer, grew up watching his dad race and win, was an alcohol champion, made the move up to top fuel, and certainly looked like he was on his way to his first championship when an accident over in England paralyzed him. He has since then dedicated his life to trying to find cures for paralysis and make life better for people that have had the that have been put in the same situation as he has. And that's what tomorrow's track walk for those who can't is all about. Christian Baldwin on the left side, Spencer Massey on the right side. Come on, let's get a 300 mile an hour run. I haven't seen one of those yet. I guess all I had to do is ask, how about a 373 at 324 for Spencer? Krista goes 386 at 297 miles an hour. And that's gonna have some happy people down there, I think on both sides of the racetrack. Spencer Massey goes to the top. Krista Baldwin goes to number two. We go down and check in with Jason. And I'm down here with Jake Sanders over here. Krista Baldwin's team, and that's a great run in the right lane, but how about a 386 off the trailer? That is just short of our career best. That's a lifelong goal for that kid to race Spencer Massey. Congrats to the teams. We've done a lot of hard work over the winter. Great run for both teams. The Cheetah Machine. We'll see you on Sunday, hopefully. Yeah, that was solid. He mentioned just a tick off of her career best, but a great side-by-side -side run. That's what Top Fuel's supposed to look like. Daryl, it's a whole lot more fun when it goes like that. Now we're talking. Congratulations to both of them. Career best, I think. Uh, just missed for Krista, and yeah, solid run for Spencer as well, driving Pat Dakin's machine. Looks like we're giving one of them a boost down there at the top end of the racetrack. Get set to go with the next pair. If somebody wants to come out and walk the track tomorrow, obviously they can get the tickets for that. If they want to take care of that this afternoon, what would be the easiest way? Uh, we're behind the uh, pit grandstands. Uh, we're selling the track walk uh, armbands for $20. So you can walk the world famous Gainesville Raceway tomorrow morning with us. So come out and join us. We're also going to be giving a uh, wheelchair to uh, family in need as well. One of the great things about coming out here to the track walk for those who can't at the Emily Oil NHRA Gator Nationals is Daryl still has a lot of friends in the biz, 
and you just never know who's going to come out and join us. It's a great autograph seeking opportunity as well for the fans. Yeah, usually most of the drivers join us. Uh, you know, we've got a lot slated, uh, a lot of the drivers slated to uh, to join us this year. So uh, hopefully, come out and get some autographs and walk the famous quarter mile. All right, Alex Laughlin and Billy Torrance coming up next. Alex Laughlin making his top fuel debut here in the Havilland machine on the left side, and Billy Billy. At the end of last season, and Billy Torrance and Capco Part 2 was going to have a little bit of an abbreviated season this year, was probably not going to run enough races to get into countdown and run for the championship, but as we've seen with these Torrance cars, Anytime they bring them out, it's capable of going to the winner's circle. Daryl, you have been around this a long time. I've been around it quite a while. Have you ever seen a literal part-time team that is as feared in the eyes of competitors as that second Capco car? We call those guys ringers. <laughs> there have been a number of teams over the years that come out and try to run on a part-time basis. I just can't think of one that's ever been as big a threat as this car. No, he's definitely a ringer. Well, right now what he's trying to do is maybe gather a little information that will help his son, who will be up in that Pet Boys Top Fuel call out a little bit later on. Johnny West now working with the boys down there on Billy's Capco Contractors car. And for Alex Laughlin, he's working with the folks at Powerbuilt, the folks at Hot Wheels, the folks at Haviland. I love the story of the guy that was supposed to drive a Pro Mod in Denver. His Pro Mod wasn't available. His sponsor said, can't you find anything? And Scott Palmer said, you want to drive my Top Fuel car? How do you turn back to one of those, right? You know as well as anybody, once you get the top fuel car, there's no backing up. I think it's a great story, and I think he's doing a great job. He's a great young man. Laughlin in the left side, Torrance in the right. That's Torrance, comma, Billy. <laughs> 376, 328 miles an hour for Billy Torrance. 385, Alex Laughlin, 319 miles an hour. Spencer Massey stays number one. Billy goes to two. Alex goes to three. Hey, race fans, do me a favor real quick while it's quiet out there. I know that it took a lot of time, but how about what the safety safari did with what was an absolute bold racetrack earlier today so that we could see side-by-side -side runs like that? A lot of effort out there, and it's paying off now. Great job, guys. Spencer Massey sitting in the number one spot as Trip Tatum and Doug Foley get set to rock. I guarantee you this, Gainesville could not get here quick enough for Trip Tatum. That car that's gonna be rolling out over here in the left side. Because in Arizona, we had a really good race car all throughout qualifying. The highest starting position on Sunday ever. Pulls up for round number one, hit the gas, the parachute falls out on the starting line, and he ends up being a round one upset victim. But he's got a car out there right now. It was put together by the Capco boys. Bobby Lagana and Dom and the guys down there at their shop in Indianapolis. It is a clone for those cars, and it really runs like it is. It does, and you can tell all those cars that those Capco boys work on and share information with, they all run good, and they all run very, very uh, consistent. And uh, they don't hurt a lot of stuff, so it's, uh, it's a great combination that they've been able to uh, help spread amongst the, uh, some of the other competitors. Well, Trip Tatum hoping he can pick up right where he left off in Phoenix. John Stewart down there ready to turn the screw. On the injector side of it, Doug Foley on the other side, the Protex team out of North Carolina. Doug Foley, Tim Lewis, they have made the commitment to come out here and run the full season. They're chasing points, trying to fight their way into the countdown to the championship. Sixty 
57, 331 miles an hour. Holy smokes. <laughs> Look at Tony and Stewie down there on the start line going, I'm not sure we meant to do that. Foley goes 377 at 313 miles an hour, but Trip Tatum had it going on at the eight mile, 2.95 seconds, 295 miles an hour. Jason. And I'm down here with John Stewart. Out. Reinhardt said you looked like you didn't expect to do that, did you? No, we slowed <laughs> it way down. The air is just so good. There's no grain. And we just happened to hit it just right. And it's been running good. We had that problem with the parachute falling out. Fix that. And the car's going to be a good car. I'd say Phoenix wasn't a fluke. It's probably going to be a good car. Take another look at this on the NHRA.TV replay. Probably, he says. Yeah. Career best on both ends, speed and ET. 2.95 seconds, 295 miles an hour at the eighth, and here comes Tony and Schumacher. Clay Milliken. Tony Schumacher, the Skag Power Equipment, Maynard family. Tony was actually doing a couple of appearances here in Florida earlier in the week. Meeting the green and hanging out at a couple of Skag dealers in the state. This is Clay Milliken, Carts Plus team. Summit Racing is joined now. Brian Holmes just knocked the window up through the TV booth next door and said, Yo, dude. Track record. Appreciate it. How about having Sarge back out here as if top fuel wasn't mean enough, right? Tony Schumacher, of course, the winningest driver in top fuel in NHRA history, no matter how you want to count him up, whether you're talking race wins, round wins, championship wins, number one qualifiers, been there and done that. He's been sitting out most of the last couple of years, but he is definitely back now and back with a vengeance.266, not the run the Sarge was looking for. A 405 for Clay at 248 miles an hour. You don't normally see Clay go out and pedal a car like that. In a situation like this, we literally don't know how many runs we're going to have. And a guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. Tony goes to number seven. Clay goes to number eight. And the safety safari is going to dash down there and check on both of them. So, Daryl, you mentioned they can come by your trailer back there right behind the main grandstands, get the wristbands for tomorrow. What if somebody just wants to find some more information about what you're trying to do? What's the best way to do that? They could go to miamiproject.org um, and learn more about uh, what we do and um, how long we've been around. It was formed in 1985 by the Bonacani family, and uh, we're located in South Florida, and uh, that's where all the scientists and all the researchers are, and it's uh, this is our home race, and we've always supported this race and uh, it's, it's great to be back here. I was here for the very first Gator Nationals and as most of you remember I've been to every single one of them except 1972. And why was that? Okay, I, because I had bad grades and uh, I got punished and my dad wouldn't let me come so uh, other than that I'd have a perfect record. Well, it is our pleasure to have you come back every year and be a part of this. It wouldn't be Gainesville if we didn't get to hang out and chit-chat a little bit. So I really appreciate you being here. I love it. This is my favorite track. It's my home track. It's uh, my homies in the grandstands and a lot of my high school buddies and friends. So uh, I love it. This is home for me. Well, we've got another pair sitting down here on the starting line. Looks like we've got a uh, convention going on down there at the far end of the racetrack. It'll just be a couple of minutes before we're ready to go. Can you believe... I brought my souvenir with me. This, can you believe it's been 30 years since everybody here at Gainesville witnessed the first ever 300 mile an hour run? 30 years. 30 years. 1992 when Kenny Bernstein did it here. It seems like yesterday and um, you know it was a great day. Um, I was talking about it with somebody this morning I did not realize it was 30 years ago but uh, it was a great day. It was our biggest milestone left in our sport and uh, for those of you that were here um, it was certainly a day to be remembered. 
Yeah, it was 1992 at this event in qualifying when Kenny went 30170, the first one to ever go over 300 miles an hour. And it really changed the face of everything drag racing. Got a lot of attention coming out here. But 30 years later now, and we're approaching 300 miles an hour to the eighth mile mark. I think that's just absolutely unbelievable. We've seen cars go 299 and change at the eighth. Yeah, it just shows you that uh, there's a lot of smart people out here, number <laughs> one. Uh, racers will be racers. And to remind the fans, this stuff's not easy. So this is, uh, th th what these guys do is very difficult. So to put these kind of numbers up on the board is uh, credit to all the team. All right, our final pair here before we get into the Pet Boys call out. Here comes the return of Austin Proc and the defending race winner, Josh Hart, over on the right side of the racetrack. If you were with us last year, Josh, who lives down in Ocala, Florida, home of another uh, pretty big name drag racer that you might be familiar with, and Big Daddy thinks this kid's got a bright future. Josh Hart came out here last year, his very first top fuel race, and left with the trophy. And I don't think anybody has thought of him as a rookie since that day. I can't remember anybody that's even ever done that. Um, Gary Selzy did it. He did. He did. Well, Daryl Russell actually did it also. Well, that, that's, that's uh, a very difficult task. And uh, he's a very fine young man. And I believe in Garland's. He's got a fine future. Uh, no doubt about so it. So does Austin Brock. Right, Austin Crock, the Montana brand Rocky Mountain Twist Machine. During the COVID shutdown, sponsor pulled back a little bit, and he's been out of the car for most of the last couple of years. Well, Fred Teague decided to step back up, get back involved. They've actually got Ron Tolbert down there working with Joe Barlam and the gang, and he is looking to pick up where he left off a couple of years ago. There, 376, 326 for Austin, 378 for Josh Hart at 300 and six miles an hour. Josh's car banged down there just before the finish line. You can see the speed down a little bit. We are rolling around the corner here, getting set to go with our first round of the Pet Boys All Star Call Out. Daryl, I really want to thank you for coming up and spending a little time with us. I hope that uh, maybe you get a chance to stop up tomorrow, but I definitely will see you tomorrow on the track walk for those who can. I appreciate it, Alan, and thanks to all the fans for coming out here and sticking through this rain. And we love you, Florida fans. Thank you very much. Hall of Famer Daryl Gwynn hanging out up here in the tower as we do a little top fueling. And now we are rolling around a corner and getting ready for the Pep Boys call out top fuel side. They are taking a look up there at the top end of the racetrack. We're getting the first pair rolled around a corner. I can tell you the first round matchups, but I can't tell you the latter because of the format of the Pep Boys top fuel call out. As we talked about earlier, the drivers all got a chance. The top drivers got to call out who they wanted to race. When we come back in round number two, whoever is the quickest winning car from round number one will have an opportunity to call out who they want to race in round number two. So there's no set ladder going into this race. It's all going to be about exactly what it sounds like. I think you're the weak duck on this pond, and I'm calling you out. They have already rolled the Doug Coletta Mac Tools machine around the corner. Doug, of course, hot off of that number one qualifying effort he had out in Phoenix just a couple of weeks ago. He's going to be lining up here momentarily with Justin Ashley. And this is the one pair that, well, basically didn't get to call out because everybody else went, I want him, I want her, I want him. And these are the last two cars that were left, but it should be fun. Justin Ashley with his big win out there in Pomona to kick off the season earlier this year. The Phillips Connect folks, a new sponsor to NHRA, helping out with Justin Ashley. They work on trailer monitoring and security. If you are in any kind of a transportation biz, you have trucks, you have trailers, you ought to check in with the guys at Phillips Connect and see if they've got something. $130,000 up for grabs qualifying for the Amelie Oil Gator Nationals at stake. First time any of these teams has seen the racetrack this weekend. Pressure's <laughs> on. Track temperature 
has dipped to 85 degrees. We're talking, that's a pretty happy place if you are a top fuel tuner. We've got Justin Ashley on the left side, the Phillips Connect, Toyota, Kato, Vita C Shot Machine, and in the right lane, Doug Coletta for Mac Tools, Mobile One, Toyota, CMR, Construction and Roofing, Rev Kemp, Alan Johnson, Brian Houston made the move during the winter break over to Coletta Motorsport to take charge of this Mac Tools car with one mission in mind trying to win Doug a championship. They qualified number one at the last stop on tour. Mike Green over in the left side. He has been joined by Tommy DeLago in the co-crew chief role. That is the Phillips Connect machine and they won Pomona to fire off the season. One of them will advance to round two of the Pep Boys all-star call out. Both of them are hoping to qualify for Gainesville. First pair, first round, it means everything. goes red 3.718 330 miles an hour for Doug and a big red light Justin goes 372 330.96 miles an hour turned it green and got the win oh man Doug Coletta on the wrong side of the tree I didn't see that coming but what a great side-by-side -side run to kick off the Pep Boys all-star call out Side by side, 71, 72, side by side, 330 miles an hour, but only one light was green, and that was Justin Ashley's. So he will advance, we'll keep track of the ET, and see if he is going to be the one to make the call for the next round. We're rolling our next pair around the corner, and it's gonna feature that CMR construction and roofing team of Sean Langdon, taking on Mike Salinas, and Mike Salinas, Got his car all covered up. Jason, what's going on down there? Well, I don't know, Alan. Why don't we find out the Scrappers Racing Team? They're about to roll out a brand new look for this car in the Pep Boys All-Star Callout. Are you guys ready? All right, let's show it. It's a Pep Boys car, Alan. Check out how cool that thing looks. That is beautiful race car for Mike Salinas and team. I like it. I like it a lot. I think they're hoping that'll bring them a little good luck here in the Pep Boys All-Star Callout. Pep Boys, for those of you who don't know, it ain't the Pep Boys you grew up with. That company has been rebranded and changed their focus. It is a full service center now. Whether you've got an older car that needs service, whether you've got a brand new car that needs taken care of, check out your local Pep Boys. It is all about service from top to bottom. Well, this ought to be fun. Joe Costello has made his trip up from the starting line to the announced booth as we fire the second pair. I tried to get something going with these two. The numbers, they just didn't match. They're heavy betters, big players. This is all about what we learned yesterday. Alan, the energy on the starting line, absolutely tremendous. We are witnessing NHRA drag racing history. I think they should have bet two bucks. It ain't about the money. It's about, sign that for me. I'm gonna put it up in my hauler, and every once in a while, I'll come down and remind you that I'm carrying your money around. If I'm winning, I want it to be two million, but you know, if I'm losing, two bucks is fine. I heard, I, <laughs> I heard, I heard. But hey, we've got engines fired up. All of that is in the rearview mirror. Sean Langdon, Mike Salinas. Salinas called out Langdon. Langdon gonna try to make him pay. And Sean Langdon's car wouldn't do a burnout. Oh man. Remember what happened to Artie Allen earlier in the qualifying session. I am willing to wager that's what just happened to Sean Langdon, CMR construction and roofing car down there right now. I'm not sure there's anything they can do that's gonna make that car go forward at a high rate of speed when it's time to go forward at a high rate of speed. Pulled in, hit the gas, never did a burnout. Now for Mike Salinas, team scrapper, Rob Flynn has taken over the day-to-day chores on that car. They're still getting a little input from AJ and Brian as told by Mike Salinas, but all eyes right now are on that CMR roofing and construction car. Is it going to go wide open when they hit the gas? And I'm not 100% sure it is. Very intense moments out there. Obviously, the Coletta Motorsports team just lost one with Doug Coletta, Sean Langdon, a great lever, and everybody is paying attention to the left side of the racetrack. Mike Salinas, he knows what's going on as well. Langdon just double-bowled him. 
Trying to get inside Mike Salinas' head. I think Langdon is playing with a wounded duck. Sean Langdon didn't move. Mike Salinas goes 3.709 at a new Gainesville track record, 332.10 miles an hour. Salinas with a solid shot down there, and for Sean Langdon, lost the round, broke the car, and at this moment in time is not qualified for the Gator Nationals. At least they didn't make the extra bet. Oh my goodness, 332.10, Mike Salinas, the Pep Boys top fuel dragster. Let's go down to Jason Galvin on the starting line. And I'm here with Rob Flynn, the crew chief for Mike Salinas this year. A winner a week ago or two weeks ago now in Phoenix. You roll out the Pep Boys scheme and that is a new track record speed, Rob. Well, that's, uh, well, that's the fastest we've run all year, too. And, uh, yeah, it's great to roll the Pep Boys car out here and then uh, make a real nice run. Uh, obviously, the, challenge, uh, the conditions are challenging, but uh, everyone's making great runs, and uh, it's great that the crowd uh, is out here today to see this great racing. Is there a team hotter than you guys right now? Is it what? Is there a team hotter than you guys right now? Uh, no, we're just, we take every race as we get there. I gotta tell you, if there's a hotter team than them at this exact moment, you're gonna have to show it to me. I wanted to go back and take a look at the burnout, but this is gonna be leaving the starting line. Sean hit the gas and uh, all systems not go. Salinas, meanwhile, goes tearing into the second round and at 3.70 right now, he would be the person in position to make the call out for round number two. You know, Alan, this format really played into the hands of Mike Salinas. He's been working so hard to show his personality. Has said in business, he's kind of like the Iceman, but out here he wants to show himself, and he bust out onto the stage yesterday. He made the call out, and he got the wind light. Coming up next, and they are giving the signal to fire him up. It's going to be Brittany Forrest, Forrest, the Monster Energy Flavor Pack Machine on the left side, and Antron Brown, the Matco Driven Car on the right. And Brittany called him out. They've given the signal to fire him up. A little shot of gasoline in the injector. Checking the gauges, set the fuel pressure, set the idle speed. And Brittany Force and Antron Brown, a couple of former champions in the category, roll into the water box. Amanda Busey. Well, Mike Salinas advances here in the Pep Boys All-Star call-out, but you got to drive that Pep Boys dragster down in front of these fans. They're heading to the next round. How important was that for you, Mike? This is, I want to thank Pep Boys for coming on board. Uh, Pep Boys Auto Center and Tire Service uh, coming on board. Awesome. First win for them, and it's great round win. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Justin has advanced. Mike Salinas has advanced. As of right now, Mike Salinas would have the call out for round number two as the Monster Energy and the Matco Tools machine get set to go head to head. And these two have got a little side bet on it as well. I think this was one of the most surprising call outs when uh, Brittany comes out and calls out Antron Brown. They've got a great relationship. He's a three time champ and she had a side bet in her mind. He asked for breakfast. She asked for a Magic Mike dance. Does Alan even know what a Magic Mike dance is? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They're making the final adjustments on both of them. David Grubnick oversees the monster machine. He is a deep thinker, and he's a guy that gets nervous in situations like this because he's not sure of the racetrack. He's not sure of the conditions. He hadn't had any practice runs, but he has got a really fast car. Best of tire smoke we've seen, and we saw a lot of it. Hey, Gainesville, how about 337 miles an hour, huh? Brittany Force goes 3.684, 337.75. Antron smokes his way to a 505 at 168 miles an hour. Well, Brittany qualifies her. Another look, and Steve O in the right, and Steve called her out. Steve Torrance simmered on this decision for weeks 
everyone asking him, asking Bobby, asking Hoagie, asking Mama Kay, who are you guys gonna call out? And when he burst out onto the stage, the answer was Leah. Leah says they're a new team, they gotta earn respect. Well, this is a great opportunity to go out there and take down the four-time uh, champ. A new team, who are they kidding? Who are they kidding? That's what her, she's saying. They have a new team owner. And they have a new team name. Tony Stewart is the team owner, and he is down there on the starting line right now. The power broker, direct connection guard, and Steve Torrance, them Capco boys, as was said yesterday during the ceremony for the first call out in the top eliminator club, basically have run roughshod over the entire top fuel field the last four years. Now, this is pretty interesting, at least I think so, and I got the microphone. Steve Torrance chose the Budweiser side of the racetrack. He is the first car in the Pet Boys call-out race to choose the right lane, and after watching what happened to Antron, chose to stay there. Will that be a wise choice? Let's find out. Seven, 329 miles an hour. Steve O's going to win it. Leah pedals her way to a 512. Again, trying to make sure the power broker car gets into the field. But Steve goes 3.697. Steve goes 329 miles an hour. Steve goes into the next round of the Pep Boys All Star Call Out. And that means when it comes time to make that call, it will be Brittany who gets to decide who she wants to race. Let's go down to Jason Galvin on the starting line. And I'm down here with Bobby Legan and Bobby, you're taking a look down there. Alan Reinhardt brought up a good point. You went right lane even after seeing what happened to Antron in front of you. Why? I, both lanes are, you know what? That's one of my points. It's a safety safari. You guys busted butt. It's spectacular to see the crowd here, but the safety safari guys are second to none. I love you guys. Uh, you earned a, uh, another top golf outing before the year's up. And uh, thank you, Pep Boys, for putting on that show. And uh, God bless America. Bobby, hold on real quick. Brittany has the choice here. Do you want her to pick you? I, none of that matters. We're just putting on a good show. I guarantee you this, them Capco boys, they ain't scared of nobody as we watch again, Joe. Both racers off the starting line within a thousandth of a second of each other. Neither was great, but Steve makes it on through there, 329, 369, going to the next round. It was interesting watching Leah's car, the Dodge Power Broker machine, looked like she took her foot off the throttle and in a normal first qualifying session, you probably wouldn't get back after it. You go, you know, we got plenty of time to qualify. We're not scared about this. But after her car shook and she got off of it, she realized I got to get it down there because we simply don't know what's going to happen as far as future qualifying. So she did what she could to get her down there. We've got the spray buggy out there on a the racetrack making a lap or two. Hey, race fans, 